overflows, understanding of language and powerful imagination. Understanding of language and powerful imagination is the basic index of the way for development of a child. Paul Harris, a British psychologist and academician specializing in child development, later a professor at Harvard Graduate School of Education in Cambridge, Massachusetts, says, by contrast, anthropologists do not do experiment, certainly not on the culture they are studying, rather they master the language observe carefully and engage in long conversation with trusted informants, specifically when they are puzzled. Children like anthropologists are trying to make sense of the culture they live in, including the beliefs and values. They ask certain questions which shows their inquisitiveness and as parents, as an elder, we have to respond to their inquisitiveness in a positive manner, give them the hints so that they learn to explore things on their own as time goes on. But because of our own incompetence, we ignore and overlook this inquisitiveness in a child. Once you put these two things together, you have a child who can listen to a scene he or she has never seen and build it in their minds. Harris says they can imagine unobserved things, no other species is capable of this as far as we know. For example, by 13 or 14 months, children show clear signs of being able to understand references to an absent object or person and are willing to, after their ideas based on what someone tells them. In this way, Harris says, children accept information that runs counter to, to their own ideas. He describes a scene where a toddler is told that a toy left behind is no longer in the original place. Without actually seeing the toy being moved, the little girl nevertheless looks for it in a new spot. She understands that what she thought about the toy isn't necessarily true. Another person's testimony could provide an update. In another example, Harris talks about a 22 months old girl who asks one night where the mom is. She is told that mom is asleep. It isn't out. A month later, when the adult asks the girl where the mom is, the girl replies, mom sleeping. She hasn't seen for herself that the mom is actually asleep. She learned that, learned and accepted this fact from another person's testimony. Harris' initial interest in this work grew out of his earlier research on imagination. He found that in using their imagination, children not only think through and act out 
fantastical possibilities they have never experienced. Being a pirate looking for a buried treasure or an alien flying through the space, but they also surprisingly use their imagination to think about real events and things that are not visible like death or germs. In a series of experiments <coughs> with four, six and eight year olds, Harris and his team of school the school research students asked the children about familiar things <laughs> ask these children about familiar things like tigers and wolves they were also asked about made-up creatures no one had ever seen like flying pigs the children all agreed that tigers and wolves exist no one believed there are flying pigs children are very intelligent and inquisitive the children were then asked about scientific things most had never seen even in pictures like germs based on the flying pig responses we do not believe what we do not see children sh should have said germs also do not exist however since children do learn what others tell them from testimony all of the children said that everybody believes in germs at some point children had been told about germs germs exist or wash the germs off your hands and had trusted the person who supplied this information so on one hand they said that flying pigs do not exist but when because they they do not believe in what they did not see but when it comes to germs all of them agree that we believe these exist because they have heard from someone and they trusted the person who have told them another way to think about this Harris says is to think about the history of medicine during the 18 hundreds microbiologists like Louis Pasteur claims about harms of germs were contested particularly by doctors and so the general public did not think much about the role of germs played in the transmission of diseases like cholera. I repeat here, during the 1800s, microbiologist Louis Pasteur's claims about the harm of the germs were contacted particularly by the doctors and so the general public did not think much about the role of germs played in the transmission of diseases like cholera. Today the role of germs in the spreading these illnesses is widely accepted by doctors and parents and so on. Harris says assertions made by other people are children's main guarantee that germs really do exist. What is meant by cognitive leaps that Harris spoke, he continues to explain. 
kind of for now.